All right, everyone. So we've got this customization where we've changed the font. Now the project doesn't look like the original. It doesn't have the basic Arial type of font. And this, again, this is why people get a degree in this stuff and get the big bucks. Because you can't just take any font and put it into your project and have it look good. That's why you should browse Font Squirrel and look at the different font specimens. Does it have the characters that I need? Go to that little testing screen and type in the characters that you might think you need. And then I kind of did it um, a little bit of the spray and pray sort of method where I put the asterisk. Put it on everything and let's see what happens. Now, uh, you might want to be a little more surgical and say at, attach this to the H1s <coughs> only, or you could do H1, comma uh, H2, and only those things will get it. But I kind of like the way mine looks, so I'll keep it that way. And actually, if it was, if it was really going to work, perhaps this asterisk. If you did do the the asterisk method like I did, actually we should really have that at the very top, and maybe we'll just repurpose what's already there because there's already an asterisk saying web kit tap highlight color so this is optional if yours is working and you're happy with it fine but what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to move this font family out of its own asterisk definition and put it to the one at the top because there's already one there I'm going to take that whole font family and then delete that at the very end and go back to the top and that's where I've already got a definition that says asterisk everything web kit I'll say everything, give it a font family of my font. If I run that, it'll probably work the same, but it's always a good idea when you make changes to test them. Okay, so on <coughs> on the project, we've got a home screen, art, and computers. And at least for myself, I don't know if you've noticed it, uh, when you go to your computer's screen, the text at the top is cut off. It's got some of it and then dot 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 and over on my art screen I don't have that problem and on my home I don't have that problem so what's happening here is that jQuery mobile has a property built in that reserves some amount of empty space up there I suppose they assume that whatever appears at the top will always be short perhaps like you know the name of your app so one 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 way to get around that is I could have all my pages say you know my SDCE engine just have this H2 here have the name of the page that would work but let's say that we do want to take advantage of that space up there and have something longer well we're gonna need to rewrite a little bit of the built-in jQuery mobile code to override the default and I believe the default is 30 percent empty space up there so the way I figured it out, the way you would figure any of this stuff out, is to use the element inspector built into your web browser, your favorite web browser. That's what I did uh, previously. Because remember, everything that we're working here is still HTML. So if I were to open that index file, you don't have to do this, but I'm saying that if you were to open the index file in, let's say, Chrome, and remember we've got inspect element I would use the detective skills we talked about a while ago to try to figure out um, how to fix that let me show you here specifically 
at a certain point, if the top is too small, it'll cut it off like that. And I found it here, and I'll show you where it is. But uh, this is saying right here, margins 0 and 30%. Remember, when you have two values, it means something. You've got top, right, bottom, left, clockwise. Define the top value, right value, bottom value, left value. If we say all four, if we say two, then the first value is the top and the bottom together. And then in the second one is the right and the left together. So here it's saying, no margin at the top and bottom, which is probably controlled by something else anyway. And then 30% margin on the left and the right. So up here, it's getting cut off. In this element inspector, I can go in here and say 10%. Uh, no more cutoff. So we'll have to do that in a moment. Again, how did I figure it out? I got out the good old element inspector from Chrome. Right click on the spot you're trying to understand more about, inspect element, and then poke around. This is the part that I can't tell you, do this. You have to figure out, you have to have a little bit of detective skills. You have to poke around, is this the right thing? Is that the right thing? Maybe down here on this path, is that the right thing? Is this the right thing? And keep an eye out on the right side over here for something that makes sense. You know, if we're trying to change the background color of a button and it's not behaving, well, I'm going to keep an eye out for something over here that might say background dash color. And if I find it, maybe change it. Maybe change it to pink or red. Does it change? OK, I found it. If I didn't change, well, maybe go up the chain over here. Maybe change that color. It just randomly, remember, this is not changing things permanently. And if it does change, then we found the right thing. See, I got a little bit of purple right down there. And I found that it's UI bar A in that case. But that was a digression. What this one up here is, is UI dash header, dot UI dash header, space dot UI dash title. So that's saying jQuery mobile created for us a class called dot UI dash title. And that's inside of something else that's a class of UI dash header. That's why there's a space. It basically means the thing on the right is inside of the thing on the left. So we could have further, like uh, h1 UI title header. So we've specified the, head, the h1 inside of title inside of header, which is different if it was simply h1. That might have been applying to the body. And then it's got comma, UI footer, UI title. So it's, this is also applying to the footer. And it seems that on the footer, we're safe. Our text isn't as big. That's why I never cut off. But if you want to be safe, we're going to edit this so that both the, the header title and the footer title have a little bit more breathing room. Let's go back to Eclipse. We'll go to your style sheet, uh, your Kodika style sheet. Let's go to the very end. We'll create our definition here. It's dot UI dash, type, uh, dash header space dot UI dash title curly braces. So here we're saying anywhere UI title is used and it's in the UI header, control it thusly. That's what the space means. In addition to what we've got here, we'll say comma, because we'll say also apply what we're going to write to this other selector, dot UI dash footer space dot UI dash title. So now whatever we write within the curly braces will apply both to the footer title and the header title.
we saw the example in the in the inspector it had a bunch of properties a bunch of selectors it had font size and min height and all of that but the one we care about is is a uh, margin so we'll write margin colon and the default there was 0 and then 30 percent semicolon that's the default that doesn't change anything what will change is this is basically 30% empty space equally on the left and right, so 15 and 15. Um, no, it is 30 on the left, 30 on the right. Yeah, 30 and 30 on, on the left and the right. Uh, so we'll say instead of that much space, maybe 10. So we can have a longer title, a longer text up on the title of the header and the footer. So save and run that and see if you get a result where the computer title is no longer cut off. saying on the computer screen oh yes and maybe one of back button that doesn't have a, a word yeah yeah we could do that um probably would still get cut off so this is a this is a, and now this is a certain size a 3.2 inch maybe we're loading this on a on a note which has a seven inch and there's no problem. Yeah, so uh, I have a five whatever. Five inch? And uh, it's not a problem on that one, but it's a problem on the two oh one with the intermediate classes. Uh, intermediate class, okay, that's an even longer word. So yeah, um, that's why we beta test. Uh, so over on computers right here, intermediate, so that one's even longer. Uh, so a couple of ways to fix this. Um, We'll see maybe about just making it a back button instead of the word back. We'll see if that does anything useful. But most likely, it's still going to get cut off some amount. That's what that. That's why it was 30%, to kind of keep you protected from going too far to the edge. We put it down to 10%. Um, now that we know that, perhaps we don't need such a long text up there, intermediate computer classes. You know, we could just say intermediate. That might be all that we need. Check something here. Can we do a no text on that? So let's see. Uh, data. Uh, where is that back? Let's see, what's the code again to remove text? Yeah, 
data icon pass no text. Possibly. Yeah, so there's probably a way to, to fix that. What I'm trying to do is remove the, the, the word back on that back button. It doesn't seem to be doing it this way. There might be ways to do it. So the other way around this, of course, is we don't need such a long name, intermediate computer classes. So if you want to, you can go to line 246 of your index file. And instead of it saying intermediate computer classes, I'll just make it say intermediate. And you can find the line where you can find the line where you've got uh, basic computer classes a little higher, uh, 231. Now I'll just write basic. So that's a possible solution there. Know that you cannot write a whole sentence up there and be visible on all devices, and that's our. That's our issue with working with, with many types of devices. All right, so um, to further customize things, uh, we're all probably using the same um, color, the same style. Notice here on my virtual device, I've got this blue gradient and such. So after looking at uh, a little bit at the Android um, portal, the design portal and material design, perhaps this kind of style doesn't quite fit with modern Android apps. And also, I've noticed that uh, on my real device, uh, it, it didn't display any of the colors. It's back on the, on the default uh, simple gray colors, which I think I can also see here if I open in the web browser. So the reason that's happening is because we, no, I guess it is normal here. The reason that's happening is because the way we defined our colors in Kodika here, I said, well, we'll just do the one way to define the color. This is in the Kodika CSS file, line 38, for example, background 
color, linear gradient. And that's supposed to be the official W3C standard uh, to define colors. And it's showing in the virtual machine, the virtual device, but not in my real device. So um, what we want to do is now, because everyone's running their own app, we want to now give you a chance to use your own colors. And we'll apply here the full specification so that it should that should cover all, all devices. So remember, that was a while ago when we customized our colors uh, in the first month, I think. So we'll, let's go to the web. And we'll search for ultimate CSS gradient generator. to the ultimate CSS gradient generator at colorzilla.com. And here you can pick any colors, maybe something. Yeah, you can still use gradients and such, but uh, at, by looking at the documentation, perhaps we should go with something more modern, more muted. But you can do whatever you want here. I'm going to go with one of these greens. So let me give you a moment to choose your gradient, maybe play with it, change its um, various settings, <coughs> and then we'll apply it to our project, and it's going to be just copy and paste, but go in and choose some, uh, some gradient. All right, so I found my gradient. Uh, this is just a preview up here. You can also set an angle to it. Uh, but anyway, this is the code, the complete code. And what we had done last time was just use the official W3 standard, which I guess doesn't cover everything um, yet. So you're going to copy the whole code. Just select, hover over and select Copy. Make sure that gets copied to your clipboard. And then we'll go over to our CSS file and plug in that whole block of code to replace the one if from before. So 
So I copied that. Go back to Kodika and let's see, where did we apply these colors? page theme A, and then the header text, slight slate gray, the bars most likely there. All right, so I'm going to try it here first. On line 38, I've got that line 38, I'm going to remove that completely and then in there paste what I got from the ultimate generator. So line 38, remove what was already there and then replace it with this and then uh, test it and see, see how it looks. You might have to go in and uh, do some uh, extra customization, but that's the concept. We've already got some placeholders here of elements to be editing, and then with the ultimate generator, we can get the we can get the the, the full code. All right, so notice what I've been doing here. Uh, you've got on line 37, which is the color of the bars at the top and the bottom. So I put in that code. Color is your text color. So if you chose a, a bright color and your text looks weird, it's because your text color is right there, white. If you need to change that, you can. It looks fine here. Now, <laughs> buttons that have been pressed are being controlled by this one over here, UA page theme, da, 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 button active. So that's line 54. So active buttons are the ones that have been pressed. I chose some color there, so a green. And then you've got the hover color. When you move your mouse over a button, I think it's too strong. I'll change it in a moment. But you've got those colors, and those happen via line 50, which is right here, UI button hover. Now you're not going to really see hovers when you're on a device. You can't hover, you just click. But here, to be complete, if it was a web app, that's what you would be editing.
And notice the way I'm testing it quickly. I'm opening up my index file within the built-in browser in Eclipse. Remember, you can right-click index, open with web browser, and then rearrange your screen so you've got a little faux device on the side here, and then you can quickly test. Question. Yeah, we have we have um, settings for button active and button hover, but is there? I mean, but like the buttons are white now when they're neither active nor yes. hovering. Is there another setting where we set that? Yeah, there is. Uh, let me look. Let me. Uh, I need to look through the element inspector, and we'll figure what that one is. But there's definitely one before you click. It might simply be UI-BTN. Let's see what happens. Or, yeah, let me check this. What, what didn't work? Oh, uh, well, because the virtual device is trying to be as much as possible like a real device. So I don't have hover on a real device. It's either tap it or not. This is just an emulation as close as possible. What's what's the question? So you put that that code, the uh, background color. That that's from your <coughs> that's from your code up there. That was already there. Oh. But are you saying this specific color? Yes. I got that color by playing around with the color generator over here. Oh. Okay. I thought that this is a good complement to what's already there. So then I got that color from right here, the very first color. Oh, I don't need it to be gradient and fancy. You could put the whole thing, especially if you've got like a little gradient in there. I've just got a flat color. Okay. I'm going with flat color. So, so. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I did your color. Yeah, I got
Okay, it seems that if you want to change the default color of the buttons, so here's the answer, Fred, um, you're going to want this. UI page theme A space UI button, comma, and then HTML, UI bar A, UI button, and then your color. So look at my new line 50. I put it before the other items because logically you know that should be visible before the other things happen, the hover and the active. So if you guys want to change your default button color, here's the line. Here's the code. Yes. When you, when you first started trying to change the button color, you you only use the, the, the first class that's listed there, the page theme A yes. button color, and that didn't do it. And then, and then you did the, when you added in the UI bar A button, that changed it. So th does that mean we, we maybe don't need the page theme A part? Let me check. I, I thought I checked that possibility and then it didn't work, but let me take that out. Because that would that would made sense to me and I thought I did it. Huh. I guess I missed it. Okay, I guess this is an easier one. You just need that. Because what I pulled out of Google Chrome had like even much longer and I was removing parts. So it's also possible to have a button that's in a page not in the yeah. <laughs> All right, so I, I redid our, our code a little bit here. Uh, it seems to be HTML space, then UI uh, bar A, UI button, and that seems to change the default color. So then this is why a um, this is why a high paid graphic designer is part of the package because they'll perhaps know that you don't really mix that red and that green. <laughs> so now I have to figure out what will be a good color that is within my motif that is not too dark, not too light, and doesn't clash. Yeah. And then just to be clear, the way line fifty reads is if there's a, a UI button inside of a UI bar A mm -hmm. that's inside of HTML. It seems like HTML is <coughs> It could be. And again, I can remove it and let's see what happens. But that's what I pulled out of uh, Google Chrome, which is supposed to be showing me the code. Yeah, then yeah, it goes it away. So there must be some stuff going on behind the scenes with jQuery mobile. That, that's why that works. Because if we built something from scratch, then we could write this however we want. And we never added anything called UI button. Right. That's all being done by, via jQuery mobile. Does the uh, shortening also apply to the second example on line 54? Could you just have the, the, set, the one after the comma? That would make sense. Let me give it a try. Because that seems to be only affecting. Let's see, and that one is my hover. Seems like it. So possibly even with the third one also. Line 58, that one is the active color. Yeah. Now, I'm testing this, and it's looking great on, on this page. And I'll go to other pages, and hopefully it looks good. Hopefully there isn't some case where that part that I removed needed to be there, and then suddenly we have to put it back. But yeah, like a panel or something like that. Yeah. So I'm going to go over to these other screens here. They seem to have a different structure. Mm -hmm. So, 
perhaps we're fine. So that was um, the the stuff I removed. No, the stuff that you just the last thing that you oh, you just removed it. No, I think it's the background color red. Yeah. Yeah. That's affecting what? Different pieces of the interface. Yeah. So when you on the on the first screen inside, but then on the the next one, it, it's different. On the art screen? Yeah. At least on my device, I mean, every device is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, I'm looking at mine and I and I don't see it. So, again, uh, testing it more. Question, James? I do. Uh, I'm looking at your uh, one that has uh, active there on line 58. And it looks like the kind of thing that would have a colon for the... Uh, Pseudo-class, post-host, Where specifically? Uh, at the end of line 58 where it says active, mm -hmm. it looks like it would be the kind of thing if it follows the pattern of oh, 54 yeah. where it would be a colon. Yeah. And I don't know if you had typed in that uh, selector or uh, if it was copied from... Uh, no, I copied that from the Google um, inspector. It looks like it has an extra UI dash button. I agree with that, too. Yeah. All of that stuff there. So, but it's working. <laughs> you know, my active is active. Right. So everything... From a namespace sample what, uh, on the screen. What does it look like for you... With the, um, the, the, the art, the art class one, because the cover color for me is it's changing the top color for those, those drop down. So you said on the art, mm -hmm. and then here? Yeah, so the click on is changing the color on mine. Let me see on mine, on my device. No, mine are plain. Just like the, the virtual, just like this here. Uh, actually, let me run it on my virtual device. I was running it within the built-in browser. So I go to art, and yeah, these are also plain. I think that question is sort of moot because ultimately we're writing our own CSS to override it wherever it came from. But if you do want to find out where that's I mean, coming from. Your, 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 your other option is, well, maybe I'll just leave out jQuery mobile and then just use my inline, or, I mean, and then just put my own color in and not, not use, not start with the theming and have to undo, <laughs> change all the theming. 
but I don't know what else I, I end up giving up. But, well, the, you give. I think you would give up a lot because if you're saying not use it, do you mean not link to the jQuery mobile JS yeah. file or CSS file at all? Mm -hmm. You're going to lose everything. You're going to lose this whole design. You're going to lose the whole page. You know, the idiom of having a page, data roll page, and everything. Um, with all of its buttons and icons and everything, you would lose way too much. So I think, it, you know, it's a little annoying to figure out your colors, but that's like, you know, tearing down the whole house. You know, even tearing out the foundation because you don't like the paint on the wall. But there's, oh, we've linked to two, we've linked to, to a jQuery and a jQuery mobile. Yes. jQuery mobile runs on top of jQuery. It needs one to function. jQuery mobile needs jQuery to function. Okay, so you can't pull out jQuery unless you pull out jQuery mobile. Exactly. Okay. You'll get a lot of weird results. Errors or just nothing really working. So, and Jerry, jQuery mobile has... The, the, the button and the, and the icons, that's all jQuery mobile. That one's in jQuery mobile, yes. So it's really not an option to leave out those either. I, I would not, no. So I spent a little while trying to get some colors. I'm pretty happy with them, except I think the green is still too dark. It's not feeling, fitting with my overall theme. But again, that's why people get a degree and uh, charge $60 an hour and all of that. But overall, I'm liking it. Hopefully, you're liking your own colors, your own design. Because again, we're going to you know, go forward with your own design, your own font, your own colors, etc. Um, so any questions so far? We're probably running into a few nuances here and there about, well, how do you affect this color or that color? And something's getting affected that I wasn't expecting. Well, that's Perhaps that's what happens as... The color the map. What's that? The color the map. Oh, yeah, yeah, the map. I remember that one. Um, yeah, that one is being done differently. Yeah, actually, let me ask you guys can you check really fast on your virtual devices? Is the map working? is working if we open it just directly. Which version is your virtual device running? For <coughs> 412 or something? You know, actually, on my real device, it's not showing up either. Ah. And it was showing up, you know, last week. Mm -hmm. I don't think we changed very much internally. What's that? Well, what's supposed to happen 
is that it looks like that. The color will be behind the map. It's like on the borders. So it's going to look like that when it loads up, but I'm not sure it's not loading up on our devices. Now, I did make a change, <coughs> which was to set the... the jQuery to internal rather than the external links and I kept the version of jQuery that worked because I was testing this and I was updating them and then checking and then it wasn't working so I went back so if you do notice we've got jQuery 172 just for the map and <coughs> 2.11 for everything else and this was working oh, so you actually know <coughs> 172 inside your in the app, yeah. yeah. In the app structure. <coughs> so we can pull the code from the last class and see what happens. Let me just for the map, yeah. Is it is the map working for anyone with with this month? Yeah. It works for me on my huh. well I didn't, I didn't change my colors list. Mine's still shows. Oh. But I have the color behind my <laughs> Interesting. So let me just check this. I'm going to go back to last month's class because it was working last month, right? And we'll go in there and I'll just pull those references back in to the external code. run it on virtual and then on my real device <coughs> I put the code back as it was at the end of the month It could be that we're making too many API calls from one location. It could be that Google sees suddenly this whole room is trying to access that map and something <laughs> happens. Maybe. And yet you were able to get it when you pulled it up on that other version. On the web browser. Yeah. That'd be from the same IP, I would think. Yeah. So I'm going to leave that code as is then. Mm -hmm. That's working out. So 172 uh, jQuery did work for me on the real device this time. It didn't before? I wasn't able to get it to work on the real device ever. Uh, but so now it, it now it did? the first time it does. With this version that has the... the 172. Oh, okay. So at this point, I think um, we'll be wrapping up because what we've done is we've further customized the app, specifically fonts. We saw now how we can add our own fonts so that it's not as plain or, you know, um, what's the opposite of unique, uh, conformist as everyone else. Uh, we've added our own color so that we're not all, you know, clashing with the same colors. We explored a little bit about changing some of these rollover colors and such. You can of course use the element inspector to figure out how do I change that color above these list views. You know, you could do that. And um, those are the big ideas that we talked about. So I'm going to wrap up at this point. Next week 
Remember on Tuesday, you can come, but I'm not going to be here. <laughs> it's a holiday, Veterans Day. And um, so we don't have class Tuesday. When we come back on Thursday, a week from today, uh, according to my schedule here, uh, we're going to be talking about... Oh, we're a little bit ahead. I was planning on renaming the project next time, but we already did it. What we're going to talk about is more about uh, the manifest. Uh, we're going to we're going to deal with now. Remember last time when we were working here, I had like 15 warning messages. Mm -hmm. Today I don't have any. Do you guys have any? Mm -hmm. huh. Well, I'm sure I'm sure they'll come up as we go to publish, and we'll deal with them. So um, I've got a bunch of warnings that will probably appear and, and, how to, and I'll talk about how to deal with them. Uh, we want to edit the manifest like to keep the app uh, portrait only. You know, our app would, be, would look well if it, if it was just portrait, not this that it, that it tilts over and then it's kind of hard to work with. We'll keep it portrait. Um, then we'll go through the process of creating our own uh, signing certificate and actually exporting the project and it'll be a final mm -hmm. file and then we'll talk about going on to putting it out to the real world so have any of you shown off your project to friends and family yet were they super amazed <laughs> great <laughs> well now you can show them that site that it's worth ten thousand dollars <laughs> 